Oh, boy. A lot of offense on Saturday night, but uh, not enough defense for the Huskers as they dropped a 2-2 two and two with a Big Ten Western Division loss at home against Purdue. Welcome into Huskers Live here at the Voice of College Football. We come your way every Tuesday night. Mark it down. 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Get here. And you know what? Bring a friend. Bring two. Bring 50. And uh, we'll enjoy Nebraska football talk with Greg Peterson from Husker Online. He's always here, and he makes this show roll. What's going on, man? Not a lot. Um, just uh, trying to stay warm these days here on this uh, crisp fall evening here in Lincoln. It happens fast, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It, it, it really doesn't, I guess, in a way, because it hasn't been like 90 degrees for several weeks. But there comes a time, at least for me, where – it feels like I, I know the calendar tells me it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And I've lived various places in the north to know that it's it's usually like at night it starts getting cold. So, you know, OK, summer's over and it's only nice during the day. And as soon as the, the, the sun goes down, it dips like 20 degrees. So it's got to be like two o'clock in the afternoon where it feels good. And then it's at a certain point, it doesn't even feel good at two o'clock in the afternoon. It's like, ah. And yeah, just in the last couple of days has pretty much been, we had a nice Sunday. Sunday was a good pushing 70 degree day. Then yesterday and today, it feels like late fall, getting dark. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, we got football to lift us up, hopefully. All right. Saturday night, if nothing else, Greg. It was an entertaining game. Oh, it was great. Yeah, it was a great. Yeah. Fun game to watch. Absolutely. Trey Palmer had himself a day. He did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can look at that maybe as a double edged sword is that, uh, you know, Trey Palmer scored so quickly a couple of times that the defense had to go back out there. And, and you know, the defense was on the field for 101 snaps, which is, uh, that's Iron Man stuff. So, um, but yeah, it was a great entertaining game and Nebraska never gave up. And, you know, you, you run into a buzzsaw though with, with Aiden O'Connell and that, that offensive style that, you know, and Aiden O'Connell's on, he, he rips you apart. And, you know, Nebraska's defense had some injury problems as well. And, um, but they hung in there and I, I think you still you, you hang your head up high still as a Husker fan after watching that performance there in a hostile environment and and, and against a, a really really good Purdue team that um, is now you know they're setting they're setting themselves up to win the Big Ten West so um, I don't know there's a lot of football left to play though we'll see and you know obviously Nebraska you know in the last three games they're they're, they're two and three and or are two and one and um, you know, they're, they're, they're playing at a high level and, and what more can you want right now? Um, you know, you can still possibly make a ball game. We'll see. As always, uh, Nebraska live brought to you by Gene Arthur associates. Our friends over at Gene Arthur associates uh, would love for you to um, get an instant quote from them. Uh, so the way you do that is you grab the link in the description section that we provide for you on all the Nebraska shows and all the Nebraska videos here at the Voice of College Football, GBR. And I will drop the link in the live chat as well. But more importantly than that, that they really want to emphasize that we really want to emphasize is we got a big ticket giveaway. So our guy Mitchell made his way to the Indiana game. And uh, I guess it's too bad for the Huskers that they had to go on the road and we didn't have a ticket giveaway because they're guaranteed to win when we have a ticket giveaway. <laughs> we are one and oh. So the Nebraska football ticket giveaway continues brought to you by Gene Arthur Associates. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to drop the link in the live chat as well. And again, those links are also in the description section of the videos. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram, like and share, and you'll be automatically entered into what is now a game against uh, what looks like possibly the best team in the division, Illinois, coming up on October 29th. So you can check that game out with Brett Bielema and the boys coming to town. Yeah, they're playing really well. 
They have knocked out uh, Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin three consecutive weeks. That's the first time that Illinois has defeated those three teams since 1983. Brett Bielema has got it going. You know, he's he's one of the top coaches out there in college football. Mm -hmm. People don't give him enough credit, in my mind. And uh, he's got things rolling there in year two at, at Illinois. Yeah, sometimes you kind of wonder exactly what the difference is because it's one thing to take over a program, cycle through a couple, two, three recruiting classes where you can get better players in, you know, and make some serious changes. But when you just talk about they were a pretty bad football team, not that they were great his first year, but they, they beat Nebraska, they beat Minnesota, they beat Penn State, they beat some good teams to get to five wins. And now a historically it, bad football team as well. Yes. Yes. The, he has not had time to overhaul the roster. Uh, and, and he's still been able to, you know, lift this up to a contending team in the division. And that's what, you know, this is a Nebraska show. And if you want to point fingers, it's the coaching that's been here at Nebraska. Um, you know, Brett Bielema can come in there and do that without any of his own guys. And Nebraska just can't seem to get it right. Um, it's funny, year in and year out, Nebraska recruits right up there at the top of, you know, their competitors in, in the West um, with your Wisconsin's and Iowa's. And, you know, arguably you're getting better players and and how your offensive line and defensive line can just stink it up for so long. is It's incredible. And, you know, there needs to be changes made. There have been changes made. And, um, yeah, I mean, Brett Bielema is doing a great job at Illinois, and that's just goes to show you what, uh, you know, some good coaching and, and hard-nosed coaching does to, to talent. So, and, and guys that aren't considered all that talented. Alan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the uh, super chat you sent us. And also, Alan... Thank you for uh, your donation on Patreon. Uh, it's very kind of you. Thank you so much for your continued support here. Alan's we'll good to on the Nebraska channel here. Yep. Drizzle Stick wants to know where Omar Manning is. <laughs> He's been banged up, basically. Uh, just not been available. Uh, he's not in a doghouse or anything, and <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to a, a, a blank screen, but anyway, no, uh, he's, yeah, he's just been hobbled and, and it's kind of hard. I mean, you know, a lot of the guys are banged up right now and, uh, I expect you'd probably see him back here, you know, on, on Saturday after a long week of rest and rehab. Never mind me points out that, uh, of course, Nebraska only lost by six, but uh, it was a very odd statistical game. Purdue pretty much controlled the ball all the time, and the defense for Nebraska was on the field constantly and gave up over 600 yards. Yeah, just couldn't get off the field. I mean, you know, Purdue did that. But, you know, they <laughs> Jeff Brom, you know, he knows how to uh, – to scheme a, a game and, 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 you know, he knows how to hurt a defense and, and that was classic Jeff Brom and, and going after, you know, you, you got young guys, you know, making some of their first starts and, um, you know, banged up guys in the secondary and, and they went after it. And um, yeah, I mean, it was hard to watch, but, you know, they were still in it, you know, coming down to the end. So, you, know, you take it one way or the other. You know, it's not like Nebraska is the only team that Purdue does that to. <laughs> All right, folks, comments and questions. We will take them here at the Voice of College Football. And I am scanning our videos coming in from this week, the, all the comments to see if there's anything uh, – Worth addressing here. Um, is anybody playing good on defense? Can you point to any particular players that you think are getting the job done on the defensive side? 
<laughs> well, I mean, I obviously think Garrett Nelson's picked it up here in the last few weeks. And, um, you know, some of the linebackers have been playing well, but are banged up right now. And obviously uh, Malcolm Herzog's come in and made kind of a statement there as well. But, um, you know, overall, things are still kind of a mess over there. Um, but they're doing the best they can. And, and um, I think being playing a little bit more physical is helping them out uh, and, and getting a little bit more direction in the way they kind of changed up the coaching in that secondary. So, you know, it, it, it's a work in progress. Now, right now, like a linebacker, you're pretty much going to have to rely on an Ernest Hausman to play quite a bit, you know, as a, as a true freshman. Um, so it, it's up to some of those guys, like I mentioned, like a Garrett Nelson and maybe an O'Shawn Mathis to really get these guys going and, and a Caleb Tanner um, to lead these guys. And, and, you know, Ty Robinson, another guy. I, and actually I think Ty's played pretty well here the last few weeks as well. I'd put him up there. Um, but, uh, you know, your, 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 your pool of people you're talking about, it's kind of small right now. They need to – they really need some of these other guys that are, you know, reserves to step up because this – it's just been atrocious the way Nebraska has just been getting dominated on the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. And that's just not Nebraska football. That's not what it was when, you know, they were successful. And um, I think, obviously, I think they do have a, a guy like Mickey Joseph that, that understands that right now. And and hopefully that, um, you know, he can prove himself and end up getting the job and, and move forward and make some changes there. Because uh, you got to have a top-notch offensive line guy and, and a defensive line guy um, that understands the way Nebraska was, used to be played, Nebraska football used to be played. Because back in the day, under Coach Osborne, you had two guys basically on the line, coaching on the line on each side of the ball. All right. Um, you know, you, you, had, you had a guy that – was coaching the interior of the line and a guy coaching the exterior of the line and the tight ends on the offensive side. Same on the defensive side. You had a guy coaching the interior line and a guy coaching the, 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 the rush ends and, and the line outside linebackers. Um, you know, right now they've got two guys coaching the secondary, which is obviously there's, that was a position of need as well. And um, you know, so they're they're definitely my point is that they need to make some sweeping changes there, um, you know, with the guys that 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 are coaching the interior guys that that really know what it takes to to win football games in the Big Ten conference these days. Folks, we've got uh, two free tickets to the Illinois game coming up on October 29th. Uh, Nebraska football ticket giveaway. You get two tickets. Brought to you by Gene Arthur Associates. Go to Facebook and Instagram. We will drop the link in the chat again. Go to Facebook and Instagram. Follow, like, and share. And you're automatically entered to check out Nebraska taking on Illinois. And somebody's got a question in the chat about uh, the point spread for that game. I'll say Illinois is going to be about, about a three or four point favorite. Something in that range. Yeah, I haven't even looked. Well, I doubt. I, don't, I, I, doubt mean, I, I haven't did any of the early stuff. Oh, it's not out yet. Okay, I wouldn't think so. Usually, I think it is. Uh, you know, by Mondays, but I just haven't looked. So, well, it's a bye. Well, yeah, that's not yeah, going to be for the next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it won't come out till next Monday, or Sunday, or whenever they do that. Is Trey Palmer? It, it's a two thirty. Uh, PM kickoff. We can. We do know that. <laughs> yes. Is uh, is Trey Palmer even better than you thought he was going to be? I yeah, I would say yeah. I, I hadn't thought about that, but um, 
Yeah, I mean, because I kind of, you know, he wasn't a guy that uh, that really logged a lot of time at wide receiver when in his days at LSU. Uh, I mean, he played, but he wasn't one of the main guys. Um, so you kind of take that with a grain of salt coming in here, and, and you know he's got the talent. Um, and I think it took a little bit to uh, to come out. I mean, you know, he's a very flamboyant guy, um, very confident guy. And uh, you could always tell that it was in there. But uh, the way that he has just really broke out here lately – makes me say yeah he has he's exceeded my expectations coming into the program and you know what i mean mark whipple's not stupid you know you, you got to get the ball to your playmakers <laughs> to score points and and obviously that's been happening here in, in recent uh, weeks <laughs> and of course uh, nebraska now with three and four so that's seven games five games to go in the mickey joseph audition for the job and uh, Oscar fans, we can continue to banter about in regards to who gets that job. You wonder if Brett Bielema would leave Illinois for the Nebraska job. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, interesting. Interesting thing to think about. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Rule just yes, recently. He has been the mold. I mean, he really fits the mold if you think about it. Yeah. Little. You know, yeah, and, and by the time he retires, he could um, make it a point to coach every team in the Big Ten Western Division. <laughs> yeah, getting there, he's already, yeah, it'd be like half of it if he hired at Nebraska. <laughs> Matt Rulf is looking for a job too. Yeah, well, you know, we'll see. He, he's getting paid a lot of money not to coach right now as well. So you don't know how quickly he really wants to get back into things. Absolutely. We also have another guy that's very intriguing though. Yeah. We've got uh, James on the line asking about the status of Ezra Miller offensive tackle. Uh, you know what? We haven't heard, obviously it's a bye week so we have not had any, any word out of Nebraska camp on injuries or anything, uh, at this point. And, and honestly, haven't heard if we even have, a uh, any availability this week. Uh, it's been silent, uh, from, from the sports information staff so far. So, um, yeah, sorry. I, I do not know. <laughs> Trey Palmer was, I mean, everybody, yeah, Trey Palmer was fantastic, obviously. Who was the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week? I don't know. I didn't look, but, you know, he should have been right up there, I'm, I'm sure. But Aiden O'Connell, and okay. <laughs> he, was, he was one. He tied with, uh, there were two. There were two, and I can't figure out who the other guy is because this is about Aiden O'Connell. But why would you write an article saying he is co-offensive player of the week and you don't mention the other guy? I don't... <laughs> <laughs> no. If somebody has it. Okay. So Aiden O'Connell. Um, I, I guess he's that. Brown with Illinois. People. There you go. The number two, a round number two pick. I agree with that. If he keeps on doing what he can, what he's doing. Joel thinks Huskers will finish eight and four or seven and five, standing at three and four right now. That would obviously be a strong finish, Joel. <laughs> Went out. You know, it's. Uh... I wouldn't want to be in Trev Albert's shoes right now when you're sitting there at three and four. Yeah. Um, and you got a guy, interim head coach right now, that, that definitely has the support 
of the fan base um, and definitely has made a, a huge difference. Um, but, you know, the question is, is he ready yet to be yeah. a head coach? Does he want to be a head coach? Yes, he wants to be the head coach at Nebraska. I can tell you that. Um, would he be bothered by not getting a job? No. He understands that. Um, you know, but he understands the culture here. He understands what it takes to be successful. And I don't know if, if people don't know or not, when he first – when he was going through the recruiting cycle, he didn't want to come to Nebraska. He wanted to go to Oklahoma and play for Barry Switzer. And Barry Switzer wanted to be his buddy. Mickey's mom said, no, you're not going somewhere where the coach wants to be your buddy. You're going to go somewhere where a coach is going to coach you and teach you how to be a man. And that's why he came to Nebraska. And that's what's been instilled in him his, his entire career. And, you know, Coach Osborne is the guy that, that instilled that in him. And, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, obviously everybody wants Nebraska to win out, and it's, it's a slam dunk decision to give Mickey Joseph the job. But, honestly, you know, th there's a lot of candidates out there. And, you know – like I think we talked about last week, if you do not hire Mickey Joseph, that guy coming in here damn well better keep him on staff if he knows anything about um, wanting to succeed here at Nebraska. Because of the way that he can recruit and relate to guys and, and to, uh, you know, he he's a straight shooter. He tells you like it is. He's hard on you when he needs to be. And he understands, he knows how to bring kids in here that are from different cultures uh, growing up that, that, you know, might go to somewhere like Lincoln, Nebraska and, and not fit in. But, you know, he's been through that himself. And it's such a big factor in, in you know, him staying here and, and being able to recruit the way he recruits. Um, either as a head coach or as, you know, an associate head coach, offensive coordinator, who knows. But he is that good. He really is. Allen thinks that the team's done winning this year. That's it. Three wins, done, three and nine. Uh, Wisconsin's playing some pretty bad football. They just lost to Michigan State, so they're still on the schedule. I know Illinois and Iowa's certainly not running away from anyone on offense, so you would expect that well, to be I mean, a close game. I mean, these games are all a toss-up pretty much going down. I mean, obviously I give Illinois a, a pretty good edge in the next game. And then obviously Michigan, um, you know, Nebraska probably about a 25 point underdog at Michigan in my mind. Um, but you know what? Iowa was a 27 point uh, underdog <laughs> going in there last week. So that kind of tells you what Vegas is thinking about how, you know, kind of even the rest of these teams are. So, Heck, I think it all comes down to, you know, who wants it more and who's going to play more physical the rest of the way. I mean, obviously, Minnesota has has question marks with injuries. Uh, you know, is their quarterback uh, going to be okay? Uh, you know, like you said, Wisconsin's not tearing things up. They're kind of trying to find a new identity as, uh, as well. And um, Iowa can't score the ball. Um, so yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, Nebraska could easily go winless the rest of the year, or they could win three, two or three more ball games. Uh, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's very intriguing the way <laughs> the West is shaking out right now. And if Nebraska is going to pull off some upsets, you might as well be there in person to enjoy the, yeah. the excitement. So get yourself some free tickets. 
Go to Gene Arthur Associates on Facebook and on Instagram. There it is right there, Facebook and Instagram. Like, share, and follow on Instagram and Facebook, and you will be automatically entered into the big giveaway for two free tickets, Nebraska, Illinois, coming up October 29th. And if you're really lucky, you not only get the tickets, but maybe if you play your cards right and hustle down to the field quick enough, and, and flag him down before he gets to the field, then you might be able to meet Greg. If they allow me back in there. <laughs> and I've been dying to make this bad joke. Is that two tickets to paradise? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I, I would, I would like to follow along with that, but, uh, not for a three and four football team. <laughs> Not pushing November. Yeah, it's a play the top twenty-five team for the second time in a row. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, they will be. That since Illinois has a bye as well. <laughs> and I'm going to talk crazy here, but uh, Illinois lost a game in the conference, and Nebraska's only lost two in the conference, so. They win that game, then hey. they're tied with Illinois, and they've got the tiebreaker on their side. Yeah, it's it's just bizarre the way that this this season is going right now. Um, yeah, right now it is it's it's just crazy how anybody can still uh, actually vault themselves up there just by having a you know stringing a, a few wins together. But Illinois looks like the cream of the crop to me at, at this point. Um, and obviously Purdue is playing very well as well. James Allen, the special teams look much improved. Yes. Big, big, big time uh, difference, uh, obviously. I mean, you know, nothing spectacular, but, you know, they're making their, their kicks. Um, you know, they've blocked a few punts. Um, they're actually starting to return the ball a little bit. And and they're not giving up those those big game back-breaking, you know, game-winning, you know, horrible plays. So, yeah, the special teams has been much, much improved. And, you know, that, that obviously the credit goes to Bill Bush for doing that. And, um it's too bad that uh, they didn't have him running special teams last year. Things might have been a little bit different because uh, he was here. He just didn't have a title, uh, you know, I mean, a coaching title. But, um, yeah, he, he's obviously shown that he's a big-time difference maker and he knows what he's doing. And and you can see he's, he's already changed the way the defense plays as well as being a defensive coordinator now. Ryan's asking, does a head coach need to be our best recruiter on our staff? Not educated enough to know this. Do some coaches differ in this area? Yes, no. absolutely they do. I don't think you want your best recruiter to be the head coach. No. He's he kind of a different kind of recruiter. He's got he's a close he's the closer. Yep. Okay. Um, he's the guy that the assistant coaches are the guys that go out they watch these guys they evaluate these guys you know on the road, um, you know, they have their big boards. Obviously, the recruit, the recruiting services have all that stuff out there as well. But they're the ones going getting eyeballs on them. They're the ones going to the high schools and visiting. You know, they're visiting these kids when they're sophomores, juniors. Um, and then when, you know, it gets time, you know, for go time, then the head coach is the guy who flies down and, and you know goes in there and sits down in, in in the living room with the parents and they're the ones who close the deal. But um, you know, and obviously you got to have a little bit of uh, flamboyancy there. I mean, every coach, every head coach is a little bit different. Um, and you know what, kids' parents pay a lot of attention to that too because you know if you get. If, if your son, you know, you're sitting there, say, you know, it, 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 anywhere, you know, uh, 
somewhere in Alabama. I don't, I don't care where you're at, you know. And and you got Nick Saban walks in, um, and you know five other big time name guys come in all in a row, you know, in 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 like a week. Um, that's how they are closing the deal. But all those assistant coaches are the guys that that started all this process and made the initial contact and. And obviously, you know, the kids come in on, on, on their visits, you know, they're on officials up until their senior year when they do their officials. And, you know, so they, they've met the head coach then plenty of times as well. But uh, that's just kind of how the recruiting process goes. Mina, you make a good point about the rest of the schedule there. We face some good backs over the next four games, hoping Reimer and Heinrich get healthy. Uh, Mo Ibrahim, Minnesota, just hit uh, Illinois up for 127 yards. Chase Brown is the leading rusher in the country coming to town for Illinois. Yeah. Uh, Braylon Allen, for as bad a season as Wisconsin's having, he's not. He just ran for 123 against Michigan State. He's a great back. Yep. So, yeah, a lot of <laughs> big ground attacks Yep. on the schedule. Yep, and so you got to be ready. You know, you got to have that, uh, you know, that front seven ready to go for those big time rushing games. Yeah, you know, I mean, now you can get ready for that. You, you passed the Purdue, you know, which is the exact opposite of what we're talking about. Although, <laughs> so get that off of your plate a little bit, and, and now you can kind of concentrate on, you know, the guys that have the hog mollies up there in the front. Yeah, to your point, Purdue is that team that's the inverse of everybody else in the division, except they did uh, have a running back in Devin Mockaby that looked like Mike Allstott in that <laughs> Purdue uniform on Saturday night. He did have a hell of a game, didn't he? Buck 78. Yeah. 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 It was disturbing to watch uh, if you're wearing uh, red. <laughs> but I was trying to think of the last time I've seen a running back. For the carries that I saw in that game, and I didn't watch every play, but I watched a lot of it. He looked like he was going after people. He he didn't look like he was avoiding contact. He looked like he was just taking it to guys. He was running hard. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Little Derrick Henry style. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks, do you want to go to a game? You can do it. October 29th, we've got our next game giveaway. Talk to Mitchell. Mitchell had a good time at the uh, Indiana game. And again, until until we are proven otherwise, I'm going to go with the premise that uh, when we give away Nebraska football tickets, they win. Want to know. So, and it's, uh, hey, you just want to see a really good Big Ten football game? And you want to see the team that uh, looks like they're the favorite for the division at this point. And, of course, Illinois and Purdue are going to get together here in a few weeks. But uh, Illinois comes to town on the 29th. Brett Bielema, Chase Allen, and the rest of the crew there. Tommy DeVito at quarterback. Two tickets free brought to you by Gene Arthur Associates. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to drop that link once again in the chat. Follow, share, and like, and you're automatically entered. Favorable start time, too, if you're driving. Yeah, you said 2.30. Is that a, a Big Ten network game, do you know? Um, I think so. Who's carrying that game? Uh, I got the email. Uh, da -da -da. Earlier this morning, where is it? Oh, there it is. It is uh, either ABC or ESPN right now. Still to be determined. Yeah, so Illinois, I don't remember who they play. They may have a bye week as well. They do have a bye week. Okay. Yeah. Both teams are on a bye. So the folks at ESPN and ABC are determining if there's going to be a better game to go with. Probably yep. for the ABC slot. And if not, this is going to be the one. Wow, that's crazy. Haven't been on ABC yet this year. 
<laughs> like we talked about last week, nobody brings their satellite trucks anymore. But if that goes on ABC, then <laughs> then our partners KETV in Omaha will have to be doing a live show for the first time this year. <laughs> Greg, can you think of any advantage to hiring a coach right now versus no. waiting for the end of the year? No, no. Why would you do that now? Um, these guys, these kids have been through enough, and now they, they, you know, have a guy that they. Well, you wouldn't bring him in. No, but why would you? No, you're not going to. You can't do that. I mean, we've talked about that before anyway, that. You know, a lot of your candidates still are coaching, and you can't even yeah. talk to them right now. Anyway, I mean, that would be stupid. You just you got to jump on things. It's like Wisconsin. That's why did they fire Paul Chris? Because they got their guy there that they want, and they're giving him the the, the reins to run it. Um, because they knew that 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 Leonard was was a candidate for the Nebraska job. All right, so this whole thing. You know, there, there's levels involved with this, but no, you would never hire a guy. You would not, not name a guy right now, not not with half of your season left to play. All right. That's well, like that's like that's like telling you that that's like telling somebody that, um, yeah, you know, you, you've got this job now for five more weeks, and then you're done. Um, so, give it hell. For those last five weeks, you know, give it your all, give it your hundred percent. Would you want to give it your hundred percent? No, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, agreed. When has anybody ever done that? And I can't recall that ever happening. No. No. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you can't bring in the new head coach to coach this year. So just having a coach that you've already hired, but. He doesn't get introduced to the team. He's just hired. Yeah. Yeah. It just I, doesn't. It, it happens like at the end of the year when Before the bowl game, one game yeah. left or just a bowl game. Left. Yeah. Not, you'll see these, you'll see these bowl yeah. games. Well, they're where they will interview the new head coach in the, right. in the exactly. booth and he'll say, you know, I just got around the team a little bit, but I'm, I'm leaving the, the old coaching staff or the interim guy to this is his bowl yeah. game. It's his team for right now. And then we'll get started tomorrow. It's yep. not happening on October 18th. <laughs> All right, folks. <laughs> At least we had a great time in Ireland. We did have a great time in Ireland. <laughs> and I, yeah, you know what? I think you know, I see uh, uh, Mina there, you know, is Vance Joseph a candidate? Obviously, I. If Mickey Joseph gets the head coaching job, I guarantee you Vance Joseph will be here as a coordinator yeah. next year on his staff. I mean, those guys want to be together. And, you know, Vance is all for Mickey, and and, and that would be the perfect hire in my mind right there. And I think that Arizona staff is done, by the way, anyway. With, you know, with the way people are talking about Cliffs Kingsbury right now. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, kind of the dumpster fire that's going on there with the Cardinals right now. So, so no, he's I mean, I mean, oh. I mean Mickey, Mickey and Vance talk daily. Uh, they, they call each other every single day and talk football. And we've talked, we've mentioned that before on this. Show. Yep. So, yep. Absolutely. And I think that's a no brainer. I mean, I, I would love to, I mean, like I said, that's a slam dunk right there. Um, and then you, uh, you go out there and you find your offensive guy, um, a guy that, you know, there, there's guys out there, you know, who I'm talking about, that uh, would be candidates as well. So, yeah, I, I, I like I like that idea a lot. Greg, do you have any uh, recruiting trips coming up? Um, well, you know, it's it's bye week and uh, it's the final week of uh, regular season high school play here in the state of Nebraska. And, you know, the big thing coming up Saturday is Malachi Coleman making his decision. 
Um, so I am going to go see Malachi play. Lincoln East is going to go to Gretna and play uh, Oklahoma State quarterback commit Zane Flores and Nebraska offensive line commit um, uh, Goldman. Uh, I can't remember his first name off the top of my head. Um, so that should be a good one. I kind of changed that. I was going to go to Elkhorn South and uh, Omaha North, but uh, nope. We got to do this now. This uh, with Malachi doing his commitment and everything, and um, so that's that's kind of the biggest uh, recruiting deal going on right now this week. So that that'll be a really big thing, and um, you know, like I said before, many a times that if Mickey Joseph is here, I think Malachi Coleman comes here anyway. And um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It, in my mind, it's either Nebraska or Oklahoma. And um, I think Malachi, just because he had set this date, he probably doesn't want to pull the trigger already. But, you know, he set this date a while ago, and I don't think he's the kind of guy that wants to turn back on it. And and I think with, um, you know, the way that you can get in the transfer portal one way or the other, I think he actually picks Nebraska no matter what, um, wait and see if Mickey's here or not. Um, because he can always jump in the transfer portal later. But um, that's just my two cents worth. Nothing, I have no solid information on that. That's just kind of my gut feeling. So if we run through the 23 class right now with 13 hard commits, I'm going to run through these guys. I'm going to give you a, like three at a time, and you just let us know whatever you – Obviously, there's there's some you're very familiar with, some you've seen play, a lot that you've seen play, a few other guys that maybe you're not as familiar with. So I'll let, let you pick and choose to give us a, a profile on whoever hits you here. So our top three in the class are wide receiver Om- Omari and Miller. You've got uh, interior offensive lineman Riley Van Poppel, and you got wide receiver Jaden Doss. Uh, you know, those are three guys I've not – personally got to see um so those are they're not in-state guys and right now i wouldn't even want to comment one way or the other because they committed to the old staff and true uh, you know try to have to see how things play out and it's going to be like for most of the out-of-state guys it's going to be about the same <laughs> Unfortunately, I would have gotten to see some of these guys, too, if things weren't so volatile. But um, that's just the way things are right now. Do you have anything on quarterback William Watson, edge rusher Maverick Noonan, or offensive tackle Gunner? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Well, quarterback pop. um, You know, he's he's a big Mark Whipple guy that, you know, that Mark Whipple had been recruiting to, to pit. But, um, you know, so I, I think the big factor there is that uh, if Mark Whipple's not here, I, I think he goes elsewhere. Um, and that's William That's William Watson, William Pop Watson. Uh, Maverick Noonan, you know, I mean, hell, he's his dad's a legend here. Um, he's not going anywhere. Um, you know, Maverick's one of my favorite guys in this class. Uh yeah, you know, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I saw, I watched him catch a batted ball out of the air, play an offensive line, and catch it for a touchdown in the end zone. It was when his running back coughed it up, um, and you know, he, he's a great dude. And you know, like I said, his dad's a legend here, so he, he's he's good to go. Um, and, and his Elkhorn South team is undefeated. They'll they'll be the number one seed in the playoffs when they start in two weeks as well. Um, and then uh, Gunnar Gatula, you know, I mean, he's been committed. He was, I think he might have been the first commit in this class, Lincoln Southeast, you know, another pipeline guy from the Southeast that Nebraska does really well recruiting, you know, and his dad, his dad is the head coach at Lincoln Southeast. So, you know, he's, he's a big football guy and he's not going anywhere either. <laughs> I mean, you know, those are two of the most solid guys and, and him and Maverick are really good friends uh, to, to go on with that. So, yeah. Uh, those guys are solidly committed, and, and Gunner's had a good year. Lincoln Southeast has been a little bit down, but um, they're not out of the playoff hunt yet. 
Got uh, wide receiver Benjamin Brommer. We've got offensive tackle Brock Knudsen, and we've got the edge rusher Dylan Rogers. Yeah, um, you know, first off, um, you know, uh, uh, Ben Bramer, he actually plays tight end at, at Pierce High School. Um, you know, he's listed as a tight end, but he he pretty much will move to wide receiver if you ask me. He's got that. He's got the body type more of a wide receiver than a tight end. But, you know, he's a lot like a Thomas Fedoni type guy. Um, very, very good player. He's been committed now for almost two years. He's not going anywhere. His dad's the head coach at Pierce High School as well. Um, so, you know, big time Nebraska ties. And he's got great hands. Uh, he can run and, um, you know, just needs to beef up a little bit, uh, uh, you know, especially if he's going to play tight end. But uh, like I just said, he's got more of a wide receiver body than a tight end at, at, at like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. And then, oh, I'm sorry, then uh, what, who else do you have? Brock uh, like Knutson and Rodgers? Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Brock Knutson, just a huge human being. He, he's six foot nine. <laughs> um, you know, he plays at Scott's Bluff, you know, out, out, <laughs> out in the, the way western Nebraska. He's closer to Denver than he is to Lincoln. Um, Garrett Nelson's, you know, Garrett Nelson came from Scott's Bluff, but, um, this is a kid that he, uh, he actually just came to Scott's Bluff. He played in a smaller, uh, classification school that wasn't too far away from Scott's Bluff, but he wanted to get noticed. So he, uh, transferred to Scott's Bluff and, and, uh, like I said, he, he, he's a big beast of a, uh, of a kid. Um, I think he's got a good future, uh, you know, on the offensive line especially if they can get some good coaching. Um, so there you go there. And then Dylan Rogers is, is a highly touted uh, kid out of the Kansas City area. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's kind of hard to say what, you know, if he'll end up here or not either because uh, more than likely most of the guys that recruited him probably aren't going to be here. Um, but it, it's kind of hard to say right now. But he's a heck of a player, and that would be a loss if he doesn't come here. We got uh, Sam Sledge, the guard center out of Omaha. We've got uh, Dwight Boodle, the cornerback out of Miami, and uh, the Georgia kid, Barry Jackson, a wide receiver, and Hayden Moore, the linebacker from Aurora, Colorado. Well, yeah, you know, okay, you know, you start out Sam Sledge, you know, he's a legacy. His dad played here, uh, Omaha Creighton Prep. Um He's not going anywhere. He'll be here. He's another, you know, one of the top in-state recruits, and he's been he's been committed for a long time as well. Uh, real solid player on the offensive line. He plays both ways, but uh, you know he's projected as an interior offensive lineman, and um, you know he's still got a lot to work on. You know, I've watched him play several times, and and he and definitely you know uh, there's a lot of improvement to be made there, but he's definitely got the, the willpower and, and the want to to do that. Um, Dwight Boodle, you know, I mean, what can you say? His brother, DiCaprio, starred here. Um, their whole family has loved Nebraska for for eons. Um, DiCaprio actually got in the game there <laughs> in that Kansas City game uh, uh, on Sunday. Um but uh, yeah, he's not going anywhere. He's a, he's a kid that committed to the school, not the coaching staff, which you know is kind of something that usually in-state guys is what you talk about. But um, no, he, he's a solid commit, and he's been having a heck of a year, you know, down in the Miami area, and um, you know, really really good player. So I expect him to, uh, especially if Travis Fisher. I mean, Travis Fisher is a great defensive backs coach, and and another guy like Mickey that, that you would be just stupid not to keep on staff if you're a new head coach coming in here. Um, and then uh, uh, I, I'm drawing a blank on who else you said. Sorry. Also, <laughs> uh, Barry Jackson, wide receiver. Uh, yeah, you know, another, another guy that – it could go either way. You don't know. I mean, right now he's still a commit, but, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. And, and, you know, another guy I haven't had a chance to see in person. Um, haven't really checked out how his season is going either. And then finally, 
uh, Hayden Moore, the linebacker out of Aurora. Oh, yeah. I think he's a solid – he's a pretty solid committed guy that uh, – is another kind of a, a guy that comes from a, a background of a family that's Nebraska fans and stuff. Um, and he's been having a really good season and, and I expect him to, to honor his commitment as well, moving forward, no matter what the situation is. So, you know, there you go. I, that's kind of in a nutshell. I mean, obviously you're not going to keep all these guys on here right now. Um, you know, after things all are said and done, but, um, Definitely, I think you're still going to have a good, solid core. And, and you know, I mean, like Mickey and, and his staff are still out there recruiting like crazy, just like they're going to be here as, as the staff. So, um, you know, we'll see. And, and, and if that happens, if Mickey gets the job, I would say all these guys honor their commitment. You know what we need to do, Greg, I just thought of this, is we no longer have a post-game show here at the Voice of College Football Nebraska. I wonder why that, I wondered why that guy wasn't sending me links. <laughs> I'll bite my tongue and not say failed, anything else. Failed on you, huh? I'll bite my tongue and not say much else. <laughs> because I don't have any issue with people quitting. I have no issue with that. At least communicate. Don't just wow. disappear and ghost. Wow. Just Vanish into yeah. thin air. That's, That's horrible. Yeah. Not professional. So no, anyway, no, 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 no. <laughs> I guess I was going to bite my tongue and I didn't. So, <laughs> so we are looking for somebody, preferably two or three or four people, so you can yeah. back each other up and you can also have a conversation and not just one person hosting. But we've got plenty of uh, examples of post game shows here at the Voice of College Football on other channels where we've just got one host, but uh, I know that many of you would like to do it in terms of having a conversation. So if you know of anybody that we could reach out to or have them contact me at Mark Rogers TV at Gmail uh, or you yourself, here are the requirements. Number one, you got to know the team. You got to know Nebraska football. Got to know what you're talking about. You don't have to be a coach or a scout or an expert. You need to know the personnel you need to know football. Okay, number two, you, you need to, to be able to talk. Just be able to talk, communicate. You don't have to be a professional broadcaster. Just be able to talk and communicate with people. Number three, this one was lacking. You need to be reliable. Oh, that's very important. <laughs> you need to be able to show up. So that doesn't mean you can never miss. So don't think, okay, well, I've got a wedding on the weekend of the so I can't do this. No. Tom Wait. Brady goes to weddings. <laughs> Does he really? Uh, so, so as long as you let us know that uh, you're not going to be here, that's that's not an issue. We don't expect perfect attendance. We know life happens and things come up. Just just notify us and be reliable. So there you go. Those are the three criteria. Whether that's for yourself or for somebody else that you know, like that. please let us know. Moonbot, I, I agree with you, man. I I haven't been. It's been a long time since I've been proud of this team as well. So just the way they finally started playing. You see effort. You see pride. Yeah, they, they played a good team on the road Saturday night, and uh, they fought, and uh, they were close. All right, folks, I guess we will wrap it up and see everybody back here next Tuesday night. It would be phenomenal if on your way out you hit the like button and you can always share this on social media because a lot of people don't catch it the first time around. Actually, most people watch the record uh, more so than watch the, the live stream. And uh, so bring some folks back with you next Tuesday at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Greg? Can you, can you hit the like button more than once? I do not believe so. No, you can Alan, Alan would probably hit it like every second. Yes, Alan would make up for everybody else. <laughs> so please hit the like button and please make it on back next Tuesday and bring some folks with you. All right, Greg, enjoy your the, the uh, bye week. I'd rather have something to do. <laughs> but it is what it is. Watch football. 
healing up. That's what we're doing. Okay. That's it. Yep. All right, everyone. See you next Tuesday. See you later.